Hello and welcome to PsychBoost. This is the final video of the relationship section. In this video we'll be looking at parasocial relationships. So we'll have to define what a parasocial relationship is and we'll do that through the absorption addiction model. Our key terms in this video will be talking about levels, what absorption is, what addiction is and we'll also bring in Bowlby's attachment theory. We've got some amount of research to discuss and also other ways we can extend our evaluations in an essay. So first up, so how we do we define a parasocial relationship? Well, a parasocial relationship is a one-sided relationship. While the people in the relationship is heavily invested, heavily committed, but the other person really has no idea who that person is or maybe has a very limited awareness of their existence. So the standard example is the relationship between celebrities and their fans. But really, these parasocial relationships can happen in any scenario where the interaction is mostly one-sided. So for example, with a brand like Starbucks or Nike and their customers, even fictional characters and the people who read about them, and even teachers and their students. If because of the classroom dynamics, the communication style is only really one way. The students have to listen to the teacher quite a lot, whereas the teacher only listens to each individual student on a few occasions. So one of the main theorists in this area that we'll mention a few times is Lynn McCutcheon. McCutcheon suggests that people develop these parasocial relationships in a way to try and make up for some deficits they have in their real life. So maybe they've got particularly poor interpersonal relationships, either with their romantic partner or with their friends. Developing a parasocial relationship could give them a sense of identity that they're missing from their other relationships. These parasocial relationships can start to feel addictive and working as any other addiction would individuals go through more and more intense stages as their craving builds. So when we talk about theories explaining parasocial relationships, we're going to talk about three things. We're going to talk about the levels of parasocial relationships. We're going to talk about the absorption addiction model. And we'll also mention a competing theory linking to Bowlby's attachment theory. So what do I mean by levels of parasocial relationships? There is a scale called the celebrity attitude scale. If you write an essay on this, it might be easy to refer to it once and then write CAS because it'll pop up a few times. This has been developed by McCutcheon and Maltby to classify the extent of attitudes and behaviours in these parasocial relationships. So the three levels are entertainment social, intense personal and borderline pathological. So if we say their levels, people move up the levels one at a time. So the entertainment social level, this is where celebrities are going to be discussed you know, around the office or with friends or with family, and the discussion's more for entertainment and distraction reasons. So you both might follow the same sports club and talk about the personalities in those teams, or perhaps you both watch the same reality TV. And this entertainment social level is quite common. As we go up the levels, the number of people at each level become fewer. So the next level up, intense personal, this is gonna be where the individual is having constant obsessive thoughts and maybe starting to get some intense emotions about thinking about the celebrity. The individual is going to start to develop a feeling that the relationship between them and the celebrity is in some way real. And this is what leads to those intense emotions. However, the next stage up, borderline pathological, this is where the individual is starting to display some quite extreme, completely uncontrollable behavior towards the celebrity, such as stalking behavior. And somewhere they might try and get in contact with the celebrity. They'll wait for them outside of shows. They might try and send them gifts or contact them through their agency. So those are the three levels. But what's the explanation for why people actually engage in these parasocial relationships? Well, McCutcheon suggests the absorption addiction model. The reality of certain individuals' lives isn't particularly enjoyable. Maybe they have quite boring lives. Maybe they have bad relationships. And developing a parasocial relationship is an attempt to escape from those lives. So the absorption aspect, if you see a celebrity and they're having quite a good life, by associating yourself with that celebrity closely, in some way you're attempting to absorb some of the positive aspects of their lives. So this absorption would include reading about the celebrity online, maybe trying to find on YouTube lots of videos where the celebrity is being interviewed, so you can find more and more about their personal life. The more they know about the personal life, the closer they might feel to them. And as they absorb more and more, the behaviours that they demonstrate will become more and more extreme, similar to how drug addiction works, ultimately reaching the point where they'll try and contact the celebrity. And an alternate theory is that there's a certain type of person 
who will develop a parasocial relationship. And these are the type C children from Ainsworth's strange situation. This, of course, is based on Bowlby's attachment theory, which suggests that a poor relationship with the primary caregiver is going to lead to a bad internal working model about how relationships actually work. With those children with an insecure resistant type, what to be the most risk of developing these pathological parasocial relationships? Let's have a look at some research in this area. So Maltby in 2006 used a bunch of students from Yorkshire and got them to complete two surveys. One B in the celebrity attitude scale and another one that measured health, in particular mental health. And there were a range of scales on there which measured depression, anxiety, and also measures of social dysfunction in relationships. Now those people that scored on the, on the entertainment social level of parasocial relationships did show a certain social dysfunction in their relationships. But those people who made it to intense personal, those individuals correlated quite highly to high depression and high anxiety scores. This really does indicate that there's probably a relationship between someone's level of parasocial relationships and their overall mental health. Now it could be that the obsession with the celebrities is causing the depression, or it could be that the depression then leads to the parasocial relationships. This is a correlational research, so you have to kind of say, we're not sure which way around it's going. But these findings would be predicted by the model. A much more recent study by McCutcheon in 2016 looked not at mental health, but looked at the quality of the romantic relationships of those people who scored highly on the celebrity attitude scale. So using 330 students, McCutcheon did find a high correlation between people scoring highly on the CAS and the likelihood that those people would have troubled, anxious, and pretty poor quality relationships. So again, because this is correlational research, it could indicate that people who get into parasocial relationships slowly develop issues with their own personal relationships because of those obsessions. Or it could be those people who have poor relationships in an attempt to escape those poor relationships, then go on to develop parasocial relationships. But either way, there does seem to be a link between those two factors. So how could we build our evaluation? Well, we'd certainly want to point out the issues of correlation. You can't do an experimental method on this subject. You can't make people have a parasocial relationship. So because all of our evidence is correlational, we have a real difficulty demonstrating cause and effect of any piece of research. And I've mentioned that for both of the previous pieces of research we just looked at. Now, when it comes to attachment theory, McCutcheon provided evidence against attachment theory. Looking at 299 participants, McCutcheon didn't find any link between the attachment type of those participants and the chances of them developing parasocial relationships. So it didn't matter if you were type A, type B, or type C, you were equally likely to develop parasocial relationships as any other type. And one final point to make about parasocial relationships. I've been quite negative throughout this video about parasocial relationships and about the effect they can have on people's mental states and romantic relationships. But Jensen and Denkins take a different view. They take a positive, active view. They suggest that parasocial relationships are often taken on by those people who are quite lonely. And these parasocial relationships can serve a function that these people aren't getting in their day-to-day -day life. So for example, these individuals are able to build up a social network between other super fans of these celebrities and find a sense of meaning in their life through that. Also more generally, if someone is feeling excessively lonely and these parasocial relationships help people through that, maybe they're not such a bad thing after all. I really hope you found this video useful in studying psychology. Three things help this channel grow a lot. Likes, comments, and subscriptions. Thank you so much if you've done any of those things for this video. 